Well, the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, has dropped a new hint about the potential cost of living measures that might be there in the main budget. This is during a speech to small businesses in Sydney. We'll get more details on that a little later today. Our reporter, Fiona Willen, is there. But in the meantime, I'm joined by independent MP Di Lee. Di, thanks so much for your time. Uh, your constituents and you will be looking for any cost of living relief in this budget. Now, let's put two to two, two and two together here. Uh, Anthony Albanese talking about more uh, cost of living relief when it comes to electricity bills, and he's speaking at a small business conference. So, does that give you some hope? Well, you know, uh, Laura, I, I shouldn't be so cynical, but I can't help being cynical. Um, there must be something happening in 12 months' time, you know, an election time, perhaps. Uh, but to me, this is an, another uh, headline-grabbing announcement, as usual, you know. Um, and it's up to, my understanding is about $650 for up to what, a million businesses for energy. I can tell you, and I think I've spoken the, on your program before, uh, I've got local businesses here who energy uh, bills have gone from $4,000 uh, to about $11,000. Now... Will that $650 help? I don't know. But anything will help, a small bit. But I think at the end of the day, um, wholesale energy prices have gone down. And yet, mm. now, these are all private you know, uh, electricity uh, energy companies. Are they going to reduce dividends to their shareholders? So whatever promises the government make, I I I'll be watching this closely because... You know, I've been talking about cost of any uh, cost of living, energy uh, prices, fuel excise uh, tax cut. The government have to do something in order to bring down the cost of living pressures for families and small business. And it's surprising that they're now talking about small business uh, and. Uh, uh, small business has not been a, a, a focus. Uh, as we know, the, the the IR changes that they've made, that has a huge impact on mm. small business out here. Yeah, so, so what's the uh, feedback what, what been to think? those IR changes now that the dust has settled a bit? Uh, uh, small businesses saying to you that it's just, you know, too onerous or what, what are they? What is well, the feedback? Well, first of all, it's onerous. But secondly, um, those who are working in uh, small business, like, for instance, in in, in organizations mm. that would benefit from the changes to the IR where wages increase. It's great for those who are still remaining in the job, but they have been cutting staff back because, you know, a, 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 a small business will have to shoulder the cost of that increase uh, in, in wage, for instance. And there are other costs. Energy prices have gone up. Uh, the cost of goods have gone up. The supply chain, all of that has gone up. So, Look, I, I feel for mm. families and small businesses, especially here in Fowler and Western Sydney, that are struggling because of the low income yeah. um, and the low socioeconomic, uh, you know, uh, backgrounds. A lot of our communities out here are struggling to survive, and fa family members are working together to prop up their small business. So um, I, I just get frustrated when I hear uh, politicians of the day um, making announcements just prior to an election of this big, great news, you know, that people should be so mm. grateful for, uh, when the, the, the reality, that's not the case. You know, people have to get yeah. into, go to the grassroots level and understand the hardships that people are, are ex experiencing. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think about the nuclear debate? I mean, um, it all comes down to reliability and price uh, in the electricity market. Um, we know that you know, the reliability of black coal in particular, but also brown coal uh, will be very uh, tenuous in years to come, particularly in New South Wales. Should the government just allow this nuclear debate to happen, but more broadly, pull up the nuclear ban and test the market with it for ongoing Look, base I load think power? We should, I think we should have a conversation around the, the the different sources of energy that are available doesn't mean that you have to commit to anything mm. uh, but from my perspective you can't for, you know at the moment I'm very uh, focused on the needs of, of of small business in my community out here yeah. for instance gas I I, <laughs> I don't think gas should be banned because there's a need for gas oh, so yeah. there are uh, biomethane gas for instance I've, I went to, to see uh, one of the biomethane gases here that why don't we look at some of those alternatives, right? Uh, because that will bring down, um, hopefully, energy mm. prices for people or make it cheaper for them, at least, if they have that 
but different sources of energy and not just rely on just one at this stage because we don't have the technology, the, the infrastructure to really deal. I mean, with solar panels, for instance, I mean, I hear that the, 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 the Prime Minister is going to call for an uptake, encourage an uptake of rooftop solar. Now, well, how they, first of all, how is it going to encourage the uptake of solar? Uh, who's yeah. going to pay for that? Now, with those who've got solar uh, pa uh, panels at the moment, mm. they're generating so much, um, you know, uh, energy. But from July, now my understanding from July here in New South Wales, yeah. people who, who, who's, who've got generating uh, the, the, the energy will have to opt into pay. So mm. they're not going to be paid, but they have to pay the, because they're generating energy because there's no infrastructure at the moment, yeah. no capacity to collect all of that energy. So people are getting solar panels, but they are generating so much energy, not, it's, it's, it's not going back, in, you know. It's not going back into the grid. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. right. Uh, there's also so this question wasted. about solar panels. Wasted. I mean, we saw that billion-dollar announcement uh, just last week uh, uh, that um, Anthony Albanese made in the Hunter Valley. That's all well and good. Um, there's two things there. The Albanese government subsidising um, these potentially uh, million dollar companies that stand to make millions of dollars. Where's the return for the taxpayer? If it is experimental now, I understand the need for a government uh, investment and subsidy, but where does that money go when that company then thrives? Uh, there's no return for the taxpayer there. They just absorb it into their profits. Um, the second thing... And we're not going is... to manufacture them here, Alora. We're not going to manufacture. We're actually That's just right. assembling... We're, we're assembling a, an assembly plant here. Yeah, so that and money, how could you possibly not... compete, Di, when, when China is making almost Cheap. all the solar panels that the world is consuming <laughs> at the moment, and they are so cheap. They're almost um, cheaper on the market than they are to make. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. and that's and that's, that's so. Therefore, that these kind of big announcements of what you know mm. uh, into solar, it's all great. Solar panels is all great. We're going to manufacture it. It's all great. We're not manufacturing it at all. We're not building skills. We don't have the the, yeah. the infrastructure to really manufacture here. And what we've, what's going to happen is we're, we're going to have have companies set up so that can import more panels here. And yet we yeah. don't deal with actually yeah. the circular economy because where are the panels going to be recycled? Because in a few years time. What's going to happen to those panels? So there's all of these... Yeah, um, it requires yeah. further examination, absolutely. <laughs>